today I want to talk to you about um, how to get to know a man. I've had a few clients who connect with me and let me know with a very heavy heart that they can't connect to a man. That they've done everything that's in their power to connect to their guy and that he doesn't see them. He doesn't pay attention. He feels like forgotten. And it just leads me to believe that there's some, there's some disconnect in the way they're connecting with him. So something that I've heard you speak about with great elephants is how to connect the man's heart. And we'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Sure. Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah. Along these lines, um, when you speak to these women, um, is it is it a pattern they've had with being in relationships, or are they in a relationship and they've been in it long term? I'm sure it's across the board. It's across the board. I mean, some, sometimes it's it's women who are in a relationship and they feel not seen, not heard, mm -hmm. and that's a very heavy pain that they leave with. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the guys they connect with. Mm -hmm. It never goes past X number of dates because there's no real connection. Mm -hmm. And it's not just that the guy is basically a loser. Or I mean, sometimes there's amazing guys mm -hmm. that they are connecting with, but they can't seem to go past mm -hmm. the barrier of his heart, and also they can't let go of their own fears mm -hmm. so they can't express what they really want mm -hmm. and something that I know you have the capacity to do and you actually teach this a lot is how to connect mm -hmm. how to connect with how to create a genuine connection so how, how for all the women who are listening to us right now saying how the hell do I do this I really want to learn but I don't know how what would you say to them? I think um, we have a habit of bypassing our heart in life because you know we grew up in a, in a world that uh, more often than not didn't guide us in, in, a, in how to have a relationship with ourselves and how to have a connection with ourselves so we can we easily when we feel an emotion we go immediately into action we externalize it so a lot of these women that, that feel that their man isn't seeing my first question would be to ask them how they are seeing themselves because if a woman can't see herself she can't see the man and more often than not, when a woman doesn't feel seen, she's not seeing her man. She's not seeing him. Okay. She's still in a dynamic where, where she's um, expecting to be seen without first seeing herself and seeing her partner. And, you know, when we're, when we're in, a, in a sense, uh, disconnected from, from how we really feel, that's a lack of vulnerability because vulnerability connects us to the deepest parts of our of our hearts and who we are, it's vulnerability. Essentially, is um, the soul allowing itself to be seen. So the first step is to have vulnerability with ourselves. So being very aware of how things make us feel and valuing them, as opposed to numbing them. Or, you know, I, I had, for example, a beautiful woman um, approach me approach to work with me uh, a few weeks ago, and she you know she was she had fallen into that place where so many of us women fall that she had pain in her life and unresolved issues and she was desperately seeking for a relationship you know to solve those issues to escape those issues to to not go back into herself and really um, bring healing to those parts of herself that needed healing and so whatever she avoids within herself she will avoid in him Whatever parts of her soul she's not seeing, she will not be able to see in his soul. And so, because one of the greatest uh, needs that we have as human beings is to be fully seen and accepted, we can still be inspired into, into greater aspects and we can have boundaries that inspire us to be better, that call a greater, a greater part of us to rise up, right? Yeah. But, um, but because she, you know, so, so essentially, not seeing those aspects of ourselves is not seeing them in a partner. Not accepting those aspects of ourselves is not accepting them in a partner. So, if one of the highest human drives is is that to be seen, to be known, that's the that's the ultimate feminine essence. Because masculine does feel and do. Uh -huh. You know, masculine feels and gets into action about it. He wants to fix it. He doesn't want to feel it. He doesn't want to connect to it. He wants to put himself into action. And so the ultimate feminine is the witness. You know, the witness that says, I see all parts of you and you are still completely lovable. You know, you are still worthy of my love. Like I see your shadow, I see these aspects. 
that doesn't mean I accept them or I accept abuse or I accept something that's, you know, not honoring to me. But, you know, I think Brene Brown says that the difference between uh, shame and guilt is that shame says there's something wrong with me. Guilt is, is, a, is related to our behavior, you know, something we did that has a consequence that creates uh, pain or creates a result we don't want and we need to course correct. Okay, so when you're talking about the first aspect is you have to see parts of your soul that you're not seeing yeah. before you can see them in human. How, yeah. how do you do that? So, so with, you know, with women, I, I generally would just suggest, there are lots of diff different practices they can engage in. They can engage with journaling or just developing presence with themselves. Starting to be aware of all the moments they shut themselves off to themselves. The, the moments where they cut themselves off to, you know, what they're feeling or they don't go deeper to understand. Um, you know, uh, also vulnerability are those emotions that go beyond fight or flight emotions. So fight or flight emotions are the ones we immediately go to that are masculine, that put us in control. Anger, rage, you know, um, all those emotions um, put us into some sort of action, right? So, so vulnerability is feeling what's behind the anger, which is I'm not good enough. Or, you know, this was incredibly unjust and should have never happened to me. Or I feel betrayed. Or I feel impotent or powerless. Or, you know, those emotions are the territory of the soul. And, and, and so with women, I, you know, I challenge them to see how much they've shut off those emotions that feel so out of control, the deeper layers, and they're just operating out of this reactivity, you know, which is for a, for a woman in a long-term relationship that doesn't feel seen, instead of addressing it, she could just, you know, extend her to-do list, bury herself in her children, um, f try and forget the pain instead of you know, going into the pain and, 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 you know, seeing the gift that it has of growth, the invitation for growth, the invitation to heal. Okay, so once she, she does that, she's more in contact with her true vulnerability and she's able to see and feel what's really going on inside, mm -hmm. that's still just part of the equation. How does she actually now mm -hmm. go and reach into getting to know him and getting to see him and getting to feel him? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the part where she has now reconnected to her intuition. And the, our intuition is that place where we begin to feel our partner. We actually begin to feel what he feels. We begin to feel the deeper layers of his actions. So, you know, if a man is shutting us out, if a man is not seeing us, it might be shame on his part. It might be that he feels impotent and doesn't know how to do it. It might be that he feels, um, you know, that, that he just feels at a loss to create connection because a lot of men even more so than women, are neglected emotionally. They're, they're taught to really repress their emotions because they can't be weak. That's not what a being a man is. And so as a woman, you begin to feel into your man and then it's a natural thing. You'll know the moments. He will feel the energy shift because he'll know that you're not judging him based on superficial actions. You're, you're, you're no longer operating purely out of, why is he rejecting me? And you're not caught up only in your story of not being enough for him. You really, you, you really start bringing him into a partnership of emotional connection and healing where you're, you're starting to see the original layers through which he is operating in. And then your, your compassion and your energy and your love start flowing to him in a way that becomes, um, you know, it starts melting him. It starts melting him mm -hmm. and he'll start responding. So if somebody's listening to us right now and basically step number one, is getting a chance to mm -hmm. connect with themselves. Step number two is once you have that awareness, is you create that connection, mm -hmm. and it flows, it and flows, you and you start yeah. feeling it. You don't mm -hmm. have to necessarily do something; you just start connecting to his heart. Yes. What would be like the final step for someone sure. to really not just step into this once, but actually sustain this to where, even though it's scary, even though it's not the most comfortable thing to do, and even though you might actually feel more pain than in the past because now you're getting a chance to feel him, and sometimes that's not comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. Or it's not. How do you sustain that? How do, how do you sustain being connected to yourself? To your man. By the connection to yourself. That's how you sustain it. It's, it's, it's literally a habit of understanding that, you know, vulnerability and connection to yourself is the birthplace of, it's the lifeblood of every relationship. And so once you understand that you have to go there in order to have life flowing in your relationship and, and that you have to be connected to that, you prioritize it, so that could you could prioritize it in many different ways. You could um, 
keep growing yourself, keep healing emotionally. You could invest in therapy if, if that's right for you. You could get coaching and mentorship. You could um, read about it. You could journal. You can get with other people that will really bring that out of you, will really give space to your soul because that's what it's really about. It's about you giving your soul the value that it has to, to speak its deepest language to you. It's the language, and, and the soul speaks in desires, the soul speaks, you know, there's this beautiful photo that I saw coming out of Burning Man this year. I didn't go to Burning Man, I haven't been to Burning Man, but um, it, was, it was one of these big art statues that they have at this place, and the photo was of two people, they had their backs to each other, and they looked really frustrated, like, I think one of them had his hands in his, you know, like, his hands in his head, hair, like, frustration, like, there's no communication. And then inside of them, they were both kind of transparent and inside there were two children, you know, about the age of three or four, and the two children were facing each other and their hands were touching. You know, and it's about knowing that there's always, you know, the love that's within us is always seeking connection, is always seeking to touch the soul of the other. And that the more that we are able to bring that aspect of ourselves, the easier and in flow it becomes to do that with people. So if you want to learn more about you, I'll put a link below and you'll get a chance to not just learn more about what she's doing and her work, but also potentially get a chance to talk to her in person one-on-one, -on -one. okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>